Hello ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Welcome to Adult Education Ingredient. My name is Rosalia Wong. Guess what I'm going to bring you today? Today, my topic is, what do you mean by educational counselling? Let's get started. For well, awesome suggestions and advice, put me through the link below in the description section and I will bring you awesome insights into what you need to know for your profession and your organization. So let's get back to the topic now. So as a continuing education um, uh, counselors, uh, today they provide more um, uh, and they create more instructional um, options and also they create more uh, opportunities for the students to uh, accept themselves for uh, decision making and therefore it leads to the uh, rise in the counselors who have more authority or they are more central to the um, the assessment of the uh, students needs as well as for the selection of the other alternative learning uh, activities so as we all know, the educational counsellors, they ranging from the administrators to the teachers, um, to the um, paraprofessionals and also to the various representatives of the various organisations. So um, the question is, how confident are those counsellors? Remember that um, the, the task of the counsellors, for example, include like they're giving advice and information about the educational uh, opportunities for the students. They also sometimes offer the assistance in the uh, career-related uh, decision making. They offer uh, sometimes for the counseling section, uh, so as to uh, have the uh, offer for preventive uh, purposes. They also offer counseling section in the uh, outreach occasions where they can attract the uh, our rich adults in the rural places etc so you can subscribe to my channel by hitting the button so you will not miss anything as i will bring you uh awesome insight into what you need for your profession and your organization isn't it good so let's get back to the topic again so in the taxonomy of adult students needs uh, i turn a uh, list in the um you know, in the academic survival skill that they uh, they have they actually have a high need for various improvement items such as like for example how to improve my study skills, how to improve my test test testing skills. All these are listed in the academic survival uh, skills and the personal social development facets are studied by uh, Megano and uh, Corrado in nineteen eighty one. So, based on the taxonomy of adult students' needs, I'm going to divide this topic into three parts. So, the first part will be the personal social development. The second one is about the instructional patterns. And the third one, I will be focused on administrative um, policies. And after all the, uh, all the three, um, briefly explain of the three, and then we will get back to um, explain how uh, are they affecting the uh, educational counseling. Okay? Now let's focus on the first one, which is the personal social development. So I'm going to just briefly explain what do you mean by personal social development. So personal social development is just um, uh, focus on things such, such as um, how can I get A's and B's in my courses? And um, can I find, uh, find a place to study at home? Or something like issues like um, how to improve my uh, um, concentration, how to enhance my memory, and how to acquire the broad educational um, background and how to get encouragement for my family and for example how to learn to set better goals for myself and for example how to learn to set uh, better time and set, uh, uh, set time for my study and also how to set aside time every day for my uh, study for like, the related days that I need to hang in my assignment then you need to accept time every day. So how do you do it? So now we come to the, third, uh, the second one is the instructional patterns of the taxonomy of adult students needs. 
So here the instructional uh, patterns mainly focus on the um, the instructors, instructors' preferences. Okay. So for example, instructors who are um, uh, offer the like they have personal uh, interest in the uh, in my program. For example, instructors who are like more relaxed and informal in the classroom. For example, instructors who are always uh, giving a lot of examples in the class and also sometimes involved in instructors who um, like have a realistic view of my responsibility when I'm outside the class and how to uh, uh, instructors who are like always encouraging the students and also involved in instructors who promote other uh, way to meet our course requirements and also sometimes based on the grades you know the grades which are focused on the um, the, the papers, um, the class participation or the project instead of just on the test alone. Okay, these are the administrative policies. Uh, no, sorry, uh, instructional preferences. So now we come to administrative uh, policies. So um, administrative policies involve something like courses are providing uh, the specific skills for use in the job, like they have uh, evening classes available, like maybe the being able to obtain the credit or uh, out of college experience and all these are administrative policies so if you like the content uh, remember to put your thumbs up and share it with your friend okay now back to the topic again now how does all these three um, connected to educational and how does it affect educational um, counseling so therefore we need uh, in the continuation for education in the university or college or the um, classroom, we need counselors to focus on specifically the academic wise of the students. Therefore, um, the program administrators, the faculty members, students, or the people elsewhere in the university or elsewhere in the community, they need to contribute their attention to the counseling facilities. Very important. So as we know that the uh, the trained counselors they are aware, they are of course aware of um, uh, many issues that involve in counseling according to Worth study in 1981. So the educational counseling is a functional area in which the uh, counselors of adults have the most knowledge and the most understanding out of all the faculty members. So of course um, there are some features of uh, adult counseling uh, of our educational counseling. And um, I'm go going to focus on all of them. Like number one is the the give advice and information in forms of communication, and in which the uh, interpersonal or the uh, depth of the communication is less concerned on the relationship wise. Okay, and then more focus in the wider in the information, and less in the counseling process, and then more interested in like. Uh, focus on the guidance uh, packages like individual uh, um, counseling is more focused on the guidance packages so for all awesome suggestions and advices put me to the link below in the description section as i will bring you awesome insights into what you need for your profession and your organization now um we we come back to the topic again so uh also uh where time also study for the rural counseling so for rural area counseling where uh physical uh presence is uh, out of reach for those adults and there is uh where i suggest a non um traditional approach of adult counseling of course nowadays we call it using the technology so the adult can use the uh unreachable unreach adult can use the technology to um to reach the uh, professional counselors and to offer to ask them for advice in their courses. So in this case, the innovative uh, counseling skills and innovative uh, delivery system skills are equivalent, which means that the counseling skills and also the knowledge of the counseling uh, and also the knowledge of the delivery systems are equivalent. They need to know both areas, okay? So here, the innovative delivery systems um, is involved in, for example, the non-institutional uh, settings. For example, they involve in computer-based um, counseling and program self-instructional materials. For example, radio and television, audio cassettes, and also involved in telephone use. Involved in the communication. For example, involved in social social media communication. Okay. 
that's all for me today it's a very short one and easy one isn't it and in conclusion today actually we learned that um uh today to focus on more on the counselors who provide um who are more central in providing the assessment educational needs of the student and also providing alternative um learning strategies and activities and also today we learned that the intersonomy of our adult students needs that include three aspects first one is the personal social development second one is the instructional patterns and the third one is about the uh, administrative policies also we learned that today that um, the counselors are, are, are needed in the um, academic setting that especially to focus on the academic wise of the students very important and also today we learned that the trained counselors of course they they are aware of the many issues that involve in the counseling that's all for me today thank you for tuning in until next week 